Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to take a look at a very cool way of making Windows 11 less daunting to use. Now, at the moment, it is May 2025, and in a few months' time, it's going to be the end of the line for Windows 10, unless you wish to pay for increased support or extended support, which I don't think many people will do, but potentially you might. But I think personally, it's probably a good time to head over and start using Windows 11. Now, before you start throwing the pitchforks at me, bear with me, Windows 11 is actually okay. And essentially it's Windows 10 just with a, a bit of makeup on. So what you can do is download a package such as Winhance, which kind of does what it says in the title. It enhances Windows for the end user. So this means you can customize your Windows 11 installation to be as intrusive or as private as you actually want it to make it. The choice is effectively going to be down to you. Winhance has some very, very powerful features in there to remove certain features of Windows, which you may not wish to have on your computer. And you can almost make it as good as Windows 7. No, maybe not. But anyway, it's very close. So let's head over to the computer and we'll take a closer look. OK, so here we have the Winhance.net website. Again, it's pretty much self-explanatory, the Windows Enhancement Utility. So options here, features, download, frequently asked questions and also the GitHub. If you want to go to GitHub and check out the code, etc. Let's take a look at some of the features. So in terms of features, obviously the key ones are going to be software and app management. So you can remove things like Edge, OneDrive, Recall, Copilot, and other Windows packages, capabilities, and optional features. You can also install additional software. So if you want to install additional browsers, multimedia apps, document viewers, etc etc there is a curated range of software which can be automatically or easily installed which is pretty handy also when it comes to system optimization you can change things such as your security settings your privacy settings which for some people are going to be very important gaming and performance optimization windows updates power settings basically yeah, you can read what's on the screen there it pretty much says what it does on the tin also when it comes to customization so for those of you that are going to be potentially making the switch from Windows 10 to Windows 11, but you want Windows 11 to behave and look a little bit more like Windows 10, you've got options to do that, such as your customization to your taskbar, so it's on the left rather than in the middle, uh, start menu settings, etc., etc. Also, there's some other settings which have been put in there, so you can toggle themes, etc., and you can save the settings in a config file, so you can actually easily export this to a fresh Windows installation. Or if you've got multiple PCs, you can have it so that all your PCs have the same settings, which again is a new addition and is very cool. So let's click on the download now and we'll download Winhance. And we'll save it to our Windows desktop. Shouldn't take very long at all, it's a very small package. There we go, all done. So we can close this window now and we can now install Winhance. So double click on the file. It will say Windows has protected your PC. This is because it hasn't got a, a certificate or a publisher name. It, that hopefully will be rectified at some point, but it's absolutely fine. You can run anyway. Next, you should get a Windows dialog. So set up the installation mode. So you can install for all users or just install for the current user. I'll do for all. You get your user account control. So just agree to that. And you also have to agree to the license agreement. If you want to read through it, you're more than welcome to. And then you have to choose a default installation. So we'll choose the one suggested. And also there's a folder there already because we have used this previously, but we'll install it into that folder. You also get the option if you want to perform a portable installation, you can do, so you can just remove it after, or you can have a regular installation, so you can refer back to this application from time to time should you want to make any tweaks or should you wish to update it. Also, you've got the option to create a shortcut on the desktop and also a shortcut in the Windows Start menu. I'm not going to bother with those, be absolutely fine. Click on Next. And then it's going to summarize what we're doing, click install, and it should be installed very, very quickly. Obviously, depending on the speed of your machine, your mileage may vary. Next, we've got the option to launch the program. So let's go ahead and click on finish. And again, we'll get user account control because it is making system changes. Now it's going to be initializing. It shouldn't take too long at all. And there we go. We have the nice new interface. So we've got it broken down into various categories. So we've got software and apps. We've also got optimizations, and then we've got customizations. So that's pretty straightforward, tab-wise. Also, at the top here, you've got some control features. So you've got the option to save a configuration. So once you've gone around this and you've selected all the things you want to do, 
You can then go ahead and save that configuration to a location on your hard drive or to a USB stick. And then you've got an option if you install this on another PC, you can actually import that configuration, which I think is a really important step, especially in the days where there tends to be a lot of us that have multiple PCs. So it's kind of nice that you can import your specific configuration onto all of your desktop PCs or laptops so they're all running in the same manner, which is excellent. Also, you've got the option for changing the theme for Winhance. Uh, it's bright. Yep, there is the, the, the light interface. I think we'll stick to the dark one for now. It's a little bit more pleasant on the eyeballs. Also up here, you've got option to donate to the development or further the development. And of course, you've got your normal minimize, maximize, and close windows buttons. So let's take a look at our software and apps. So there's a nicely kind of configurated key here. So it clearly tells you in colors what is installed, what is not installed, what can be reinstalled. Importantly, like we said earlier, some of these things, if they've got that little blue mark next to them, these are apps which can be reinstalled very easily should you need to. There are some, like it says here, that cannot be reinstalled at least not from this application. So things such as the tips and also Paint 3D and also the Office Hub. So obviously do be careful with those. You may have difficulties reinstalling those should you remove them and then want them back. Also, we've got our status. So it tells you what Winhance is doing and you've got options to search there. So you can search for a specific setting should you wish to, which is pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at the Windows apps. So this is what a lot of you are gonna be here for. So if you want to remove certain things, it tells you at the moment what you've actually got on your system. So I've actually removed a lot of this already. So some of you will have things like Cortana, Mail and Calendar, Microsoft News, etc., etc. So if you want to, you can modify yours. Yours may not look the same as mine. Again, you can do select all. So it'll just basically get rid of everything. Those are choices that you need to make. I would suggest removing that to start with. But if you want the most powerful clean, just do select all and it will basically go ahead and get rid of everything, including these Windows capabilities and optional features, which you may or may not want to do. If you do want to do it all and just have a super clean system, just do that, hit the button, job done. But you can be a little bit more selective. So things like things we've already uninstalled, we can go ahead and make the system uninstall these again, just so that what it does is when it actually creates the script, it creates a customized script for you and puts it in your startup so every time Windows starts, it will try to also remove these programs. So if for some reason Windows Update decides that it knows better than you and it wants to actually put some of these things back in, it will get rid of them for you automatically on System Reboot, which is awesome. Again, you've got some things here, which Windows capabilities, if you want to get rid of some of those. So these are already removed anyway. So I can quite happily click on those again and those won't get reinstalled if there's Windows updates or anything. Again, I might want to get rid of Clipchamp, so yeah, that is good. Calculator I want, Notepad I want, Camera I want, because I use webcams, etc. Paint, I don't really use Paint on here a lot. I'm trying to think which ones I can get rid of here and there, which uh, would make sense actually. Let's get rid of Microsoft Edge, because I don't use Edge on here and it can be reinstalled, so we can remove Microsoft Edge. So we'll add that to it. And also the optional features here, so you can choose which ones to get rid of. So I don't want the subsystem for Linux, obviously. Hyper-V and Hypervisor, the Sandbox and Windows Recall. That is gonna be important for a lot of people. So you don't want your recall on there. So that is kind of it. If you want to at that point, you can just click on uh, remove selected items. Or if you're doing the opposite and you actually want to put something back on your system because you've removed it, you can then reinstall things like Edge. So say if we regret this situation, we can then install selected items. So you've got two buttons there. So let's do remove selected items and it'll tell you what's gonna be removed. I'm happy with that. So we'll click on yes. Again, it's absolutely fine because we kind of know most of these are gone anyway, but it's actually gonna create that script, which is that all important bit, which runs at startup. I know I keep on harping on about that, but that is actually what a lot of scripts don't do. They don't do that continuous thing where they run in the background. So as soon as you get a Windows update, as soon as you do any kind of uh, changes to your system, potentially those can come back, which is something which obviously you don't want, hence why you're watching this video. So we'll let it go through and continue doing what it's doing here, and we'll come back when it's done. So there we go. At the end, it comes up telling you the following items were removed. So yep, we're happy with that. We'll click on OK. 
So now we can take a look at further down options. So external software. So this is actually quite a useful thing. So you've got a separate box here. So if you want to install something, so say for instance, we want to install the Arc browser or Brave or Chrome, any of these options, you can just click on them. So Chrome's already installed anyway, but you can choose to install. Now this won't run every single time. This is a separate entity and is a kind of like a, a, a one-time deal. So when you go into it and you choose to use it, that's kind of it. So let's for, do an example. So I don't want Chrome, I was gonna add WinRAR. So we do install select items. It'll tell you what's gonna be installed. We'll click on yes. And it's gonna install WinRAR in the background. It's using WinGet. So yeah, it's absolutely fine. A lot of people know what that is about. Okay, very straightforward, very quick. And again, if we wanna get rid of it, you have the option to remove it from your add remove programs if you wish to. Also, you've got other things like document viewers, file and disk management, etc., gaming stuff. So if you want to install Steam, Epic Games Launcher, kind of like quite handy things to do. Also, you've got things like GIMP. So if you want to do some image manipulation, you can do. Uh, you can install things like Discord and yeah, ProtonMail, WhatsApp, etc. It's a pretty decent list of programs there. Again, you don't have to use that bit at all. I think it's quite a nice thing that they've actually added in. So again, use that at your own discretion. Next, we'll take a look at the optimization side of things. So here we've got the option to uh, do various things. So this is basically gonna to toggle your registry values. So you've got your user account control le notification level. I would leave that as it is, unless you have a reason not to. If you, if you want user account control turned off, then just set it to low, it's absolutely fine. You've got all the options for activity history and you can toggle these on or off. So when it's white, it's on. When it's dark and out, then that is off. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. You've got options there for web searching, microphone access, uh, settings, notifications, direct text optimizations. Yeah, all sorts of things there for gaming performance, privacy, as we said a little bit earlier, and also for things for Windows updates. So at the moment it's updating everything. So that's fine. You can choose what you want. Uh, hibernate, get rid of that actually. I don't like hibernation. Fast boots already off. Again, go through these, have a read through. If you want to get rid of it or change it, you can do. Again, obviously you can go back in and turn it back on after, should you wish to. We've also got things like your sounds, sound during boot or startup sound. If you want to get rid of that, you can do. Sound effects and enhancements, spatial sound settings. Yep, yeah, you can turn those on or off if you want to. So that is your optimizations there, if you want to go in and look at those. Also, you've got customizations. So this is going to be quite important if you are moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and you kind of like got some weird stuff going on, you're like, what's going on? I don't understand. So again, you can choose your themes here, light mode or dark mode. Taskbar is gonna be the thing which is gonna be uh, a little bit weird for some people because Windows 11 has it in the middle, whereas a lot of people are using Windows 10 and previous. You're used to your start menu being on that side. So there's things you can do to kind of turn things off. So you can have the left aligned taskbar. So if you have this set to off because the default is on, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense there. It would be nice if it said on or off and told you what it's doing. So like the co-pilot button is off there. If you turn it on, it's gonna bring back the co-pilot buttons. And if you have the left aligned taskbar turned on, it actually makes it in the middle. So yeah, it's a little bit confusing that bit. Hopefully they uh, remedy that. Got your Windows chat icon, I hate that. Meet now, I hate that. Uh, search in taskbar, you can have that turned on or off. So again, if you want it to be more like Windows 7, more so, you can turn that on off. I actually quite like using that sometimes, so I'll leave that on. Uh, task view button, which is a pain. I don't really like using that. Yeah, so you can basically change this however you want to. Make your own decisions, how you want things to be. So you've got also, if you hover over these things, it will actually tell you what the recommended values are. So the current value is one, recommended value is zero. So if we do the recommended settings, we're gonna get rid of that. So we'll turn all those off. Again, make your own decisions, it's entirely up to you. Also, you've got your uh, start menu stuff you can do here. So most used apps, current value is set to zero and also the recommended value is zero. So if you're not too sure, obviously this is privacy minded. So the recommended values are gonna be the more minimal or the more restricted. So again, do it however you want to. Show recommended files, turn that off. Again, explore, you can get rid of things, change scaling, drop shadows, etc., etc. You can tweak this to your heart's content. That is going to be entirely down to you. 
But overall, I think most people, what you're going to be coming here for are the kind of the key things to actually remove parts of Windows, which you just basically don't want. None of us really want a lot of it. Like Cortana, we don't really want. Mail and calendar is awful. Movies and TV, OneNote, all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, it's just annoying and we don't really want it. So it's nice that there's a program which will do this and also, more importantly, remove it on boot up if Windows or Microsoft, in their wisdom, decide uh, they know best. So there we go, there is a look at Winhance. I think it's actually a very cool tool. And again, for some of you that just want to remove little things like maybe Copilot and maybe OneDrive, just maybe some of the intrusive things in Windows and you're not quite sure where they all live, this pretty much covers everything. Those of you that are very, very privacy minded and you basically want to strip the lot out, then you've got the options to do that. Again, like I said, do make sure you do a full backup before you make any changes, just in case you never can tell. But like I said earlier, a lot of these things can actually be reversed. So in that first section where we showed you the little blue circle there, you can actually restore a lot of programs. So if you remove one and then later on you think, actually, yeah, I could do with using that right now, Paint 3D, I'm making some models, so I want to add it back in. You can just go into there, download it, happy days, and you're back up and running. Anyway, that is Winhance for Windows. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also that chime button down there. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.